Hello and welcome to a fresh new edition of Value Investing Decoded. With me now is Navneet Munot, who has almost about uh, two decades of experience into fund management as well as investing. He is always on the lookout to find new growth opportunities, to find value in the market and in turn creating wealth for various number of investors that he has. Navneet, thank you so much for Pleasure. taking out time for us. You know, just for our viewers, you know, who are trying to learn research, who are trying to identify opportunities, maybe they are very, very initial, maybe they have already tried. Can you just explain them why value investing is so interesting? Buy low, sell high, look at high ROEs. Can you just explain that? So actually the financial theory, theory tells you that uh, markets are efficient and it's very difficult for any individual to beat the market on a sustainable basis. Having said that, there is a history that lots of investors have been able to do that. They've been able to identify securities which could outperform the market. You need to have an investment philosophy which works over a longer period of time, you need to have a right process in place and needs to have a discipline in place where you use that investment philosophy and then thereby you outperform the market. Now value investing again, I mean it's a, it's a very generic term since it's, the value is, is like, you know, is like beauty, it's in the eye of the beholder. Different people have a different connotation, different interpretation of the value investing. In our, our case, we would say that wherever you're looking at in business, I mean the intrinsic value of the business, if you can buy it at a price which is lower than that, then of course that's kind of uh, value investing. If you can buy securities which can do uh, either I mean from an absolute return perspective delivers absolute returns and but more importantly equally importantly for us relative return beating the market and beating the right peer said that, that that's critical so there are various ways to identify those securities I mean we can we can discuss more in detail but fundamental thing is that if you have the ability and the resources where you can identify securities that can do better than the market that's I think uh, the, the investing and there is no holy grail of investing as you said value investing the people who believe in, 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 in mean reversion reversion to the mean so if let's say security is trading below its historical uh, valuation then probably it will come back to the mean there are people who are contrarian investors anything that the market is doing and then you have a different belief there are people who do different kinds of arbitrage or special situations so there is no holy grail of investing you need to identify what is your strength and where you can uh, outperform that will differ from individual to individual or institution to institution. Right. You have a lot of retail investors uh, within your portfolio. What is the you know what is the first part towards getting right investment? Will the first part of value investing be also about uh, you know getting the right asset allocation between debt as well as equity? So from an, if you are asking about an individual investor, I think there's the first aspect you need to know why you are investing what is the goal of that investment is it like to buy a house 10 years later is it to accumulate certain savings for your retirement is it that you need to save for your children's uh, education or, or, or marriage at a later date what is the time horizon how much risk you are willing to take risk in this context is the volatility of return how much downside you can take so if let's say you're you are looking at a regular income then a lot of money should not be in equities because equities may have a huge drawdown you can have a year where market is down 20 30 40 percent so depending on your return expectations your time horizon your liquidity preference um, and then the other tax and the and the other personal preferences you need to design an asset allocation and within that asset allocation buy the right kind of securities now of course through a professional fund managers like us one can put in the right kind of funds which deliver him his return expectations within the overall risk uh, 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 appetite that an individual investor has got so asset allocation and then staying uh, within a disciplined manner to that just asset allocation is very important before we go into the various stocks uh, or you know the individual analysis of various companies can you just tell us that you know as far as SBI mutual fund is concerned what is the philosophy that you follow you look at quantitatives very closely also you look at various other aspects like what are the risk related to environment can you just explain our viewers about that no, sir, our idea is to generate superior risk adjusted return when I say superior are basically beating the benchmark beating the right peer side when I say risk adjusted adjusted for the risk that you take I mean if you have a portfolio where there's extreme amount of risk in fixed income it could be liquidity interest rate uh, credit risk and equities it could be a different kind of risk uh, so risk adjusted returns on a consistent basis with a long 
long-term orientation through a fundamental research uh, approach. So you basically look at uh, individual companies. So we basically run two different kinds of philosophy. One, what we call a relative return philosophy, where idea is to beat the market over a two to three year time frame, which is mostly applicable to large caps where uh, uh, you're looking at uh, uh, factors like the sales growth margins, I mean the, the, the momentum in the uh, revenues, margins and the profits because you believe that a company that is doing well will, will continue to do well. You look at the, the market expectations, what the market is pricing in versus what are your expectations. You look at the valuations uh, compared to their, their own history, compared to the, uh, the, the, the peer set within that industry. And then you identify a stock which you think that can outperform the market over a two to three year period. We have another uh, philosophy which is an absolute return philosophy. But remember, I mean, this is in a long only context. We, 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 we are a long only investor. We don't uh, short any security. So if market goes down substantially, stocks will go down. But when you are buying a stock, your idea is that it can generate absolute returns over a longer period. There the minimum time horizon is three years. There you are looking at competitive advantage. There you are looking at return on equity. There you are looking at growth. Of course, you have the qualitative aspect of the management and valuation, uh, last but not the least and that, that that's equally important and then you identify a security which you believe based on these parameters can deliver absolute returns uh, from a three year plus perspective that is more applicable to mid and small caps right can you you know just start as as a fund manager you have a responsibility to identify good stocks uh, you know can you just start by the process what's the first thing if somebody tells you that you know you want to buy X stock how do you start approaching it? Is the first thing numbers? Is the first thing looking at the dynamics of the market? How do you approach it? So it, it, it sounds like a cliche that you know one should buy good businesses run by quality management, good management available at a reasonable valuation. Well, it doesn't that happen. Easier that. said than done. So now, uh, how, how, what is a good business, right? I mean, a, a business which which generates return uh, on 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 equity or return on capital employed more than the cost of the capital, right? Then only it's a good business. Now how that happens the company needs to have a competitive advantage right otherwise in a competitive market there would be other players and the overall returns will gravitate towards the uh, uh, cost of capital so company needs to have a competitive advantage in place uh, you need to have as I mentioned about the return on equity at the end of the day as an equity investor what you're looking at is the return on the equity return on on, on your capital we, we can discuss more more, more in, in, in detail we need to have growth in that business right Right. So, I mean, if you are if you are paying a valuation of a certain time over a longer period, you're looking at this business will keep uh, 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 growing at, at, at a certain pace and you look at the management and as I mentioned, you look at the valuation. Now, most important to me, I think, is, is that competitive advantage and we where prep people I think spend less amount of time. The most important is whether the company has got a competitive advantage which is sustainable and whether that, I mean in, in Warren Buffett's language, whether that moat, whether that moat is expanding or the, whether the moat is shrinking. Uh, and how do you create the sustainable uh, competitive advantage? Various things, a company may have a patent, a company may have certain brands which are, that's why the customers pay them more. Company may, there, there could be a switching cost where customers find it difficult to move to another product. That there, there could be a regulatory as to that company it could be a cost leader variety of things that gives a competitive advantage to a company you also have to see whether that uh, business inherently uh, I, I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the what what I according to me is a very important thing when you look at the industry itself and then the, you, you apply the Michael Porter's five uh, forces the the whether the buyers are more powerful whether suppliers the, the buying power the, the uh, suppliers power you look at the threat of the the new entrants, whether the new entrants will come and the return of equity will gravitate towards the cost of, 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 of the capital or the uh, new products that can be substituted and the competitive intensity in a business. There could be great businesses, some of the business which are growing very fast, but the competitive intensity is such that one particular player cannot make money. So how do you create that competitive advantage for, for yourself? Return on equity, I mean, that's the most important thing. And when you watch TV, you, you, you don't hear those words too, too, too many times return on equity or cash flows I think people pay far too much attention on what's the P or what's the uh, earnings on, on a quarter to so, quarter you know, just, basis just just putting this competitive advantage I know you cannot talk about stocks but you know I was looking at your portfolio which is publicly available so something like Aisha Motors page industries is what you have uh, I'm not talking to you to give a stock call but 
what what went through your mind when you were researching about them when you were trying to make investment increase the allocation what sort of competitive advantages did you look at different companies will have their different so if in, 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 in a market like let's say in, in, in a growing economy like india you need to look at the size of the opportunity and in industry which is growing but when an industry is growing obviously there could be several players who could be your competition then how do you run your business differently than most of the other other players how do you create that uh, brand how do you create that distribution franchise how do you create that brand franchise how do you create a product at a price where the customers are coming to you and in some of these companies i think they had that value proposition for their customers where they found it difficult to switch to another products right so that's the competitive advantage that a company has which is difficult to break for anybody else look at the history over the last 100 years globally i think the companies that have generated that uh, return on equity on on a sustainable basis or on on that that longevity that comes from the ability of the company to differentiate themselves from most of the other players and which could be a variety of things as i said that it could be a technology it could be your agility uh, uh, in the market it could be your the value proposition you have it could be a, somebody could be a cost leader it's very difficult to beat him the cost at which he can produce different things would be for different people side market is is open to everyone right so you know just about you know page industries you know there were some issues as far as you know their their whether the growth will continue whether they'll have the competitive advantage we're getting new competition very very fast you know how do you get convinced what there, there, there are so many players for so long period this is not in like uh, industry which is like very very uh, uh, recent right but how somebody could grow much faster than the other people earning margins which are higher than the other people you're growing market share at the same time you are you're growing your margins and then you are surprising the market every quarter every, every year so obviously there are some ingredients in the in, in in the way they they were running the business that they could do it over a period of time where most of the other players could not uh, do it it's just like it's a very small thing uh, for example i mean having some of the uh, uh, raw material which which is required producing yourself because you know that the quality of that particular uh, material which goes in the final product is very very critical for customer to stick to that product the brand the way you position it that when the customer goes to the shop he asks for their particular brand because you are providing him a value you are providing him a product which is which he is not finding somewhere else at that price point so you know for a retail trying to every time just 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 uh, you know uh, compete on the price alone because customer is willing to pay you a certain premium because he's seeing that value and creating that perception about that uh, i mean one is a delivering that product and creating that perception about that product i think is is also important so, you know that was about looking at the company from an overall view but you know for our retail viewers you know sometimes it may be difficult to you know find the exact market share and things like that you know can they very simply just look at how they their lives their friends lives are changing are they shifting towards new things are they changing at least for the basic start would that be a good sort of a so large part of the investing is as 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 buffett calls is a common sense investing having a very high iq actually can go against you <laughs> uh I mean, a lot of it is like common sensical in terms of looking at certain companies, looking at certain management, looking at certain businesses. You get the sense that yes, they 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 are differentiated. They are doing some right things. But then you need to you know need to put uh, I take lots of boxes. It's not only about something that. probably you come across that this industry is doing well i mean i i keep giving this example of the telecom where let's say 10 years back had i told you that mobile subscribers in india will go from 10 crores to 100 crores the data business will grow so much but look at the companies i think whether whether they could convert that market opportunity into profits that could be shared with the minority shareholders not necessarily because the competitive intensity the uh, uh, regulatory developments the benefit went to the consumer benefit it may have gone to the equipment suppliers benefit may have gone to the government but not to the company so the understanding that industry dynamics is is like uh, quite important and then also look at the valuation we can discuss
Right. So the first mantra is they should have a competitive edge, they should have a decent brand or at least a brand building process and the market should be big and the product should be And good. very important is that focus on the return on equity. So several companies in India particularly and, and I think that's true of most of the other emerging markets where the management's focus on capital allocation, the, 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 the understanding the importance of capital allocation, you have a very good business but uh, in, in, in the looking at the overall drivers of the business and the growth of the business at the end of the day what's most important is the return on equity so there could be a growth but if that growth is coming at the cost of putting more capital if the working capital needs are increasing which is true of let's say lots of just for example let's say construction companies or some other companies where you're growing very fast but then the working capital is increasing or it requires a lot of investment then as an equity investor you are not uh, benefiting right because the return on equity is, is, is not improving so that's very very critical at the end of the day what's important is I mean the earnings that you have the cash flows that you generate and the return on equity that you get as an as an equity investor right uh, so, so just the size of opportunity and some business is growing that alone is is not important so uh, you know we should look at the ROE how, how would you look at uh, you know the importance that management wants to share with its investors we always say that you know management is credible management is of a great quality how do you identify that so th those are the softer aspects, right? I mean, so everybody is, is looking to find the next guy who could probably be, I mean, without, without taking names, uh, the, 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 the next most successful, let's say a, a banker like, like Aditya Puri, what he has done with HDFC Bank. And then again, I mean, if you look at the theory, so let's say the Buffett and Manga, they all say that you should buy a business which is so good that even if, a, I mean, in his words, I'm not quoting it, even if a stupid is running it, it, it should be good and you should look at the business, but not the manager. I think from whatever my little experience, management is very, very important. You look at, for example, we just talked about the banking. I mean, look at the several bank licenses were given. Look at one bank versus some of the banks that had to close down or that had to merge with somebody else. One can say they are operating in the same environment, they are the same regulation, they are the same market, everything is same. Look at, for example, the cement. I mean, classic example, it's a hardcore commodity business. How can you really differentiate from one bag of cement to another bag of cement? Market is like open to everybody, but look at the over a longer period, the growth and the uh, uh, ROE trajectory of one company versus the another, I think the management has made the difference. And I think when, when we meet, I think we try to look at the, their vision, I think we'll try to look at the character, we try to look at the uh, uh, the, the intention, the, 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 their intent, the, the uh, attitude toward the minority shareholders in terms of clarity of the thought process, so many things. And the, these are like softer aspects, which of course, I mean, for let's say a large company, which has got a long-term track record, that, that's in the market, you know them, but maybe for a new company probably I think you need to assess that over a period of time. Let's bifurcate between you have a mid cap fund which has done uh, you know, decently well. There you may be meeting a lot of new promoters, a lot of new uh, you know MD CEOs. You know what's the difference say if you're going to meet a TCS or a HDFC versus you know those new companies which are not yet discovered. So they they proved themselves over a longer period of time. So they started the Soya thousand crore company. They, they 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 showed that they could have a similar kind of growth and and, and the focus on profitability and return on equity when they became ten thousand, when they became fifty thousand crore company. It's a different different ball game when you have a you are running a 500 crore business and it's a different ball game when you are running a 5000 and then a 50000 crores the management bandwidth the vision that is required the execution capability that is required the vision that is required is very different at each stage and your ability to move from that step 1 to step 2 to step 3 i mean it doesn't come naturally and that's why large number of of businesses don't scale up uh, uh, profitably uh, and then somewhere they kind of falter for variety of reasons in some cases maybe the sheer bandwidth was limited in some cases maybe the capital allocation decisions were, 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 were uh, not right they could not assess probably the market better they could not assess the uh, opportunity better or somewhere they made mistake uh, somewhere of where, 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 where or the other so I think that we're trying to guess that who could be that 
next ne 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 next guy and that comes from i think experience there are there is no black and white there are shades of gray and and and, and you try to see that given the business opportunity relatively what is the most important aspect is it his vision is it his execution capability is his ability to hire the right kind of talent is his is his agility what is that quality is more important and then you pay attention to that quality basically the passion to run the business absolutely and sometimes passion also i mean the 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 the, the passion has to be that I, I generate it I mean I generate that uh, I mean I, I, I grow that business profitability over a longer period of time rather than just building the empire and that's that's a big challenge in, in emerging markets like India where everybody wants to become big in order to be the first I mean whatever the biggest or number one or number three or whatever fortune 500 I think that's less important for us I think that the, the, the guy who grows but at the same time keep the focus on 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 the returns and the cash flows i think which which ultimately come to you as as dividends over a longer period that that's that's more critical so you know a lot of our viewers may not have access to these managements maybe limited con calls agms is where they can uh, you know go and listen to these managements any other ways that you know you would you would always tend to just be away from you know you have a universe of 500 companies that you research but you know some you would just get away any any you know things that just should be one should be aware that if X is there, you know, let's not look at the company. So if, if a company has got a history, of course, over a longer period, you can make out, let's say, if there are margins are falling when the industry is doing well, or if you are seeing the conversion from the your, your profit to the uh, to the uh, cash flows, if there is a difference compared to you and, and the rest of the industry, you can make out the, 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 these are some of the aspects you can go through. I mean, the, these days in today's world, unlike when we used to invest in, in 80s and 90s, I mean, you have the transcript of the management, what they spoke, what they talked about three years back and what they are talking about today most of that information is available of course I mean you get a certain edge when you meet them but even otherwise I think in terms of information about the management about the company about the business I think it's, it's quite of is 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 readily available right uh, you know you own uh, Shri Simmons into your fund now that's a very competitive business it's a business which people like and you know it, it doesn't really move beyond one or two players but Shri Cement is probably after that you know what made you convince that you know despite such consolidation despite the bigger player just getting bigger Shri Cements will continue to do well they never raised capital oh, I mean th 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 this money was raised small amount of money long time back through the share accruals of the way they have grown the way they have you know gone about the increasing market share in the, such a highly competitive environment I think is a really testimony of the of the uh, of the managerial quality that that they have got versus most of the uh, other other players in the similar market Right. Uh, as far as uh, you know, particularly such businesses are concerned, where there is dilution or capital needs which are needed, why sh why would you just stay away from that? Yeah. So we we, we the, 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 that's what I, I mentioned. Maybe a couple of times I've used the same word, the return on equity. I think that's that's the most important thing. So there are businesses that regularly need capital. I mean, banking is a or financial services is a classic example. But then how you are using that capital? I think that that that's equally important. So as I said, there could be several businesses. Uh, you will see. A huge growth in them but if they are also kind of raising a lot of capital then 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 your return ratios are, are not improving so that that's very very important the 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 I think a capital light model where let's say you have a non-linear growth where let's say with the same amount of capital you can grow you know uh, through your own accruals obviously gives you a certain edge compared to the businesses that require a lot of capital right uh, see in the initial stages when you may be uh, you know, looking at a company, meeting them, you may find them good. Growth rates are very high, and maybe people have not discovered it. So prices may be decent. But as you go along, say a 500 rupee stock, you would expect it to be 1500. At 1500, how would you evaluate again to hold on to that stock? Because we have identified it's reached our first estimates. How would you then look at the business dynamics again? How would things change at those levels? So from a funds perspective, we remain fully invested. So at a 1500, it, it's not about, let's say I bought at 500 and then I sold at 1500. What do I do with that 1500 rupees, right? There's the equity allocation. That, that's applicable even for an individual investor. Unless you think that the entire market is so overvalued that I cannot find the right opportunity, then you keep that as cash. But otherwise, 
unless that you find another opportunity which is which you think can deliver better returns the, the time to sell i mean it might sound as a cliche the time to sell a stock is like uh, never as long as the uh, company is able to deliver the returns that you are expecting i think the time to sell is no is, is never unless that it becomes so overvalued that your incremental return expectations cannot be met otherwise i mean the power of compounding is like as they say the eighth wonder of the world i think believe in that power of compounding and that's we 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 will do the trick for you over a longer period right uh, you know as as far as uh, you know the outlook of management is concerned or you know the sort of predictability towards guidance or how they say is that particularly very important or you know more than that how they are running the business what's the efficiency ratios that is important even if you know it misses the misses the sort of outlook that good, they good, 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 good that you asked me i i, I think the the investors get uh, but i mean you run your business based on that every day there is some or the other news and the and you know there are quarterly results and all that but as i mentioned in the beginning that we 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 look at time horizon beyond that one or two quarterly results we look at much longer than uh, minimum of of 3 years and i think that's very important and actually that gives an arbitrage to us because there is a time arbitrage a large part of the market is focusing its attention on what has happened in this quarter or what's likely to happen in 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 the next quarter or the certain news today or or certain news tomorrow we try to look beyond that that's the noise and then probably people need to kind of shift between the uh, signal and 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 the noise that you look slightly beyond this quarter or the next quarter and see the ability of the business to generate uh, returns for a longer period right you know in this entire interview so far you know you have not touched upon pe or price to equity it's one of the most important you know basic tools maybe price to book value if you're talking about financials can you just tell us how important is that say we've done all the analysis at what level are you buying at what times are you buying how how would you look at that so what is investing investing is like you're projecting uh, cash flows over a longer period of time then you have a discount rate and you are discounting it to the to the current value and then uh, the then then seeing what is the value to, what is the price today and then you compare that with the value i think people get too bogged down by some of these pe or let's say price to book there is less focus on return on equity and the cash flows and i think they could be quite misnomer at times also one needs to remember that not necessarily that a 10 pe stock Uh, is 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 better than a 25 pe stock if that company is growing faster so let's say two companies a company is growing its book at 40% and available at 10 times price to book over a 20 year period if after 20 year it will become a one time price to book the, the 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 growth rate will get normalized and you compare that with another company which is growing at let's say 10 or 12 or 15% available at let's say three times price to book i think over a 20 year period even a 10 times price to book stock may deliver a better return after 20 year both will become normalized but because of that 40% growth over a 20 year period i mean it's easier said than done the confidence you need to have is whether the book can grow at a pace of 40% for for 20 years. if you have that faith if the, your investment thesis is right on that growth it doesn't matter at 10 times price to book stock could be better than a two times price to book which is growing at a lesser rate so you need to put those numbers in in the excel sheet and then decide so you know let's just take an example of bajaj finance which has done very well and again you own it within your space you know every time we get a argument that you know maybe a bajaj finance we spoken about page aishar it is expensive it is trading very expensive versus the average but it's all about relative growth basis and that's why it may be exactly. cheap for you yeah, or any of the, the the profitable growth so i mean go back and then and check the track record for last 5 7 years where uh, one is the growth rate and then in growing that profitability the credit cost versus most of the other peers or the operating on the opex versus most of the other peers obviously if you bought a cheaper stock on on that particular day let's say two or three years back you would have been better off by buying a stock which was which has done better even if it was valued a little more expensive than the other one just just wanted to ask that you know would you look at some global companies i mean india is getting a global market it's a very big global destination so you know say some ex ex you know something like a tata motors or a jlr you know if you want to just compare it to some of the others would that be very important or you would just i i, I think so so several of these businesses uh, compete globally so if you are looking at any generics uh, pharma company in india you have to look at most of the other generics company they are, they are they are competing in the same space same thing as you talked about the tata motors jlr or let's say if you talk about the it companies i mean they have they, they, their counterparts in 
and in US and other parts of the world with whom they are competing. So it's very important if a company is operating in a global environment where they are impacted by those economies or, or those, that competition, I think you need to keep those factors in mind. And I think as India becomes more and more, I would say, uh, integrated with the rest of the world, several, I mean, most of the businesses would get impacted by the by the global competition and one should be open sitting here why should you not look at those opportunities See, these are businesses of course which are discovered but you know, there may be some business some new listing you know which you know we may not have uh, we may not have so that's when you would look at the global space maybe e-commerce i think so so we, we, we are doing a lot of work for the last couple of years several of some of our analysts have have uh, traveled overseas they have been watching some of these space and maybe in next few years i'm sure some of those stocks will find their way into our portfolios see as of now we've spoken about stocks which have always done well you know there is visible cash flow you know but there may be a lot of companies back in 2008 we saw they became aggressive there was a lot of debt they had to restructure uh, how would you identify these companies where you know dead uh, suddenly people did not want to own them is that a space that you're looking at actively so that is a double S so right so when I say return on equity what are the components of return on equity you look at the uh, margins I mean look at net profit margin look at the asset turnover and look at the financial leverage so the more leverage apparently I mean theoretically increases the return on equity but the leverage is a double S so right I mean if you are not generating the return on capital employed which is more than your 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 cost of capital it can really drag your I mean ROE into negative also so that's very important leverage up to a point I mean for certain businesses may be good but it also creates lots of risk so we generally like businesses that have more operating leverage than the financial leverage having said that at some point in time when you look at the overall enterprise value I mean there is an equity component there is a debt component if you believe that over a period of time debt will reduce cash flows will come and the uh, the value of equity within the overall enterprise value can go up sometimes huge amount of money can be made in, in, in names that are quite levered so I mean if the if because the the, the uh, sheer leverage actually can lead to a situation where probably the equity value if it is very small then can become quite big but I mean it's it's, it's a risky proposition right. so you need to keep that factor in mind right just a last word for our viewers you know just if somebody is starting or trying to learn start with the large cap because a lot of data is available well, what to look at yeah so obviously well, what happens that India like some of the other markets is one of the most I would say researched market so there are 50 companies in the world which are tracked by at least 50 sell side analysts 48 of them are in India so I mean most of the large caps the uh, the arbitrage that you will have whether you call it an information research arbitrage where just by knowing lots of data points or just by researching would be would be limited in large cap space there are so many foreign investors there are so many domestic institutions and the other investors but the advantage about India is that there is a huge universe below some of those large caps also and I'm sure there could be opportunities I'm not saying that there are no opportunities for individual investors in the large cap space there are some great companies you can buy and then you can uh, hold them and then you can make good money but relatively the research arbitrage is better as you go down the market capitalization curve right now I uh, hope our viewers learned a lot I did thank you so much. thank you so much